Your mode of transportation can greatly affect the way you vacation as well as how long you vacation. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the most common ways on how to get to your destination and how that will affect your trip. So if that interests you, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. And I'm Mark Allen. And this is Hempley Ever After. Here we give you travel tips and tricks to help you go and create your own ever after. And today we're gonna talk about flying versus driving. Now this is kind of the age old question whenever you're getting ready to go on vacation on whether or not you should fly or drive. Today we're gonna give you some of the pros and cons of each so that hopefully it will help you decide what's gonna be best on your next trip. The first mode of transportation that we're gonna talk about is of course flying. Now, this is probably the most common way of getting to wherever you're going because it's the fastest. And honestly, it's probably the most reliable because you don't have to worry about repairs or anything like that that, you know, would come with you know, the stress of traveling. This is definitely the fastest option if you are looking into making the most out of your time on your trip. So if you're trying to squeeze as much time as possible, like actually at your destination, flying is definitely gonna get you there much, much faster. This does come with a little caveat though, and that is flight times. So you are gonna be a little bit more reliant on these flight times, and sometimes you may not be able to get an early flight. You may have to deal with a later flight, so you may still lose a day potentially depending on when your flight's supposed to leave. Now keep in mind when it does come to flying, you sometimes can be a little bit more limited when it comes to luggage because most airlines, they do charge for, of course, a checked bag. Sometimes those bag fees can get very expensive, sometimes $30, sometimes 50, and we even like, looked at one today that was like 60, what, $65. So those baggage fees can add up very, very quickly. So you might have to share a bag or maybe do a carry-on, whatever that might look like for you. Definitely be sure to check those baggage fees and maybe possibly downsize your luggage. This is also important too when it comes to doing like your cost analysis between driving and flying. You don't need to just factor in your flight cost, you are gonna need to factor in that luggage cost as well. Speaking of cost, the other thing that you are gonna have to think about is the fact that when you are at your destination, you're not gonna have a car to drive. So if you are staying at a resort, this probably won't be a big deal for you as you aren't really gonna need to drive anywhere. But if you are planning on visiting several places, wherever your destination is, you are probably gonna have to look into getting a car rental. So again, that is gonna be some added cost onto your trip. So these are, again, just all things to kind of think about as you are doing all of your cost analysis. So now we're gonna talk about driving and I don't know about you, but I mean, who doesn't love a good road trip? Now, the biggest thing with driving is that it can be really cost effective as long as you can get there in one day. Now, don't forget if it does take you more than one day, do not forget to factor in those hotel accommodations or maybe RV accommodations, whatever that might look like for you if you are road tripping it because those hotel fees or you know wherever you might be staying can add up pretty quick. So even though driving may seem like the cheaper option at first, depending on how long of a road trip in it, it, it is, those costs can definitely add up quick. It's also important to think about the time that it takes to drive to your destination. If this is gonna take you several days to get to your destination, you are gonna be eating up days into your trip. Now, if the road trip itself is part of the trip, then by all means, this is a great option. But maybe you only have three or four days total for your trip and you need to get there fairly quickly. Driving's probably not gonna be a great option as you're gonna not have as much time at your destination. The upside to driving as opposed to flying is that you can pretty much take as much luggage as you want, as, I mean, as much as your car can 
you know, reasonably hold without looking like the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> going down the road. Sometimes that can kind of also get a little bit in the way, especially if you're traveling with a family. Trunks aren't super big, so you still might be a little bit limited and, you know, obviously make sure that you, you know, have room for everybody to like sit comfortably in the back of the car. It is also really nice that you have the flexibility to drive your own vehicle in a place that maybe isn't as familiar to you. Sometimes I know for me, there is just a little bit more of a comfort in having your own car somewhere you're not used to. When you're having to drive a new car and you're in somewhere you don't know, it can be a lot going on. So I know for me, that's definitely a big pro of driving. Driving is definitely the better option if you really love a good road trip and the journey is just as important to you as the destination. All right, so summing it all up, obviously if your destination is super far away, flying might be a really great option for you or obviously if you're going to Hawaii, you'll have to fly. So really consider, you know, the time benefits of flying versus driving. And honestly, sometimes the cost benefits too, because sometimes it may be cheaper if you're driving versus flying. So you really have to kind of weigh out those pros and cons of flying versus driving. But sometimes do, it really does depend on how far away your destination is. Maybe your destination is only three or four hours away and to fly there can sometimes actually take longer than driving. So you do have to just kind of take that into consideration when you're deciding which is going to be best for your next trip. Like Mark Allen said, money is definitely a big factor, but it is important to remember to factor in all of those hidden costs outside of just the flight tickets or just the gas mileage. You do need to think about if there are any overnight accommodations, meals, baggage fees, rental cars or Ubers, all of those things you need to take into consideration when you are doing this cost analysis, because even though at first it may seem one is better than the other, when you add in those extra costs, you may find that it's the other way around. And finally, you do have to do what's more comfortable for you when it comes to flying versus driving. For example, if you have a fear of flying, probably don't fly. Or if you hate road trips like Kayla over here, probably just, you know, bite the bullet and pay that extra money and take a quick flight and just get to your destination as quick as possible. All in all, you have to decide what's gonna be right for you. Every trip is gonna be a little bit different, but hopefully these things will help you consider what might be the right fit for your next trip. We hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you wanna see more helpful tips and tricks, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's all we have for you guys today. Now, now go, go create, create your, your ever after. after. Get a little water ASMR. Pro tip, you probably should not drive to Hawaii. I can't with you. <laughs> so obviously think about those two because, you know, obviously if an emergency happens in an airplane, you're not going to be able to obviously just You've pull said over. obviously like six times in okay. that sentence. You should say that again. Okay.